Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We welcome everyone to our live stream mass at the National Shrine of the Divine Mercy. My name is Father Anthony Gramlich, your celebrant for today's mass as we continue to journey during the Lenten season. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Numbers. From Mount Hur, Hur the children of Israel set out to the Red Sea Road, to bypass the land of Edom. But with their patience worn out by the journey, the people complained against God and Moses. Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this desert? Where there is no food or water, we are disgusted with this wretched food. In punishment, the Lord sent among the people seraph serpents, which bit the people so that many of them died. Then the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned in complaining against the Lord and you. Pray the Lord to take the serpents away from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a seraph and mount it on a pole. And whoever looks at it after being bitten will live. Moses accordingly made a bronze serpent and mounted it on a pole. And whenever anyone who had been bitten by a serpent looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. O Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come to you. O Lord, Lord, hear hear my my prayer prayer, and let let my my cry cry come come to you. you. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Hide not your face from me in the day of my distress. Incline your ear to me. In the day when I call, answer me speedily. O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry cry come come to you. you. The nations shall revere your name, O Lord, and all the kings of the earth your glory. When the Lord has rebuilt Zion and appeared in his glory, when he has regarded the prayer of the destitute and not despised their prayer. O Lord, Lord, hear hear my my prayer prayer, and let my cry cry come come to you. you. Let this be written for the generation to come and let his future creatures praise the Lord. The Lord looked down from his holy height. From heaven he beheld the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoners to release those doomed to die. O Lord, Lord, hear my prayer, prayer, and let let my my cry cry come come to you. (coughs) Praise. 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The seed is the word of God, Christ is the sower. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Pharisees, I am going away, and you will look for me, but you will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. So the Jews said, He is not going to kill himself, is he? Because he said, Where I am going, you cannot come. He said to them, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. That is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. So they said to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what I told you from the beginning. I have much to say about you in condemnation, but the one who sent me is true, and what I heard from him, I tell the world. They did not realize that he was speaking to them of the Father. So Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but I say only what the Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone because I always do what is pleasing to him. Because he spoke this way, many came to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. For some people, Jesus is too human, that he's not divine enough. For others, Jesus is too divine. He's not human enough. Jesus will always use two titles to describe himself. He'll describe himself as the Son of God, and he will describe himself as the son of man. These two titles. When he speaks of himself as the son of man, a lot of times he refers to his humanity. A lot of times he refers to his passion that he's going to undergo. When he speaks of himself as the son of God, or others refer to him as the son of God, he speaks of his divinity. He speaks of his resurrection as son of God. And a lot of people will put this dichotomy with Jesus, such as the, one of the first heresies in the world was Arianism. You know what Arianism was? Arianism was basically, Jesus is not God. He's like a superhuman being. He's like a superman. He's got all these qualities that look divine and seem divine, but he's not divine. That was Arius. That was called Arianism which lasted for centuries in the church. And so for Arius and Arians, Jesus was, he, he was not divine. He was, he was only human, but not divine. For others, Jesus is, he, he needs to be divine, but God forbid that God should suffer. God forbid that you should go to the cross. That's what Peter was saying to Jesus. God forbid that you should suffer. We believe that you're the Messiah, but God forbid 
that we believe in a suffering Messiah. But it's only a suffering Messiah that can save us from our sins, that can take on our sins. So we need both, both Son of God and Son of Man. It's both mysteries within Jesus that he saves us. And so that is why whenever Jesus refers to himself, he never refers to himself as being born in the world. He never referred to his origin as Nazareth or even his origin as Bethlehem. He won't refer to his human origin. He'll, he'll say, I came down to the world. I came down to the world. I have come down into the world. What's he saying? He's saying, I've always existed, even before the world was created, as the Son of God, as the second person of the Holy Trinity. And so I came down into the world to save the world. And then in these Gospels, as he's getting closer to his passion, saying, I came down into the world, and I would go back up to where I came from. And they're thinking, you're crazy. And people listening to him, they're thinking, he's out of his mind. That's what they even said in other Gospels. He's out of his mind. He's crazy. What's he talking about? And she says, you belong to what is below. I belong to what is above. You belong to this world, but I do not belong to this world. Jesus is otherworldly, belongs to another world from where he came. He says, that is why I told you that you will die in your sins. For if you do not believe that I am, you will die in your sins. That word I am, that's a, that's a phrase that is a sacred word in Judaism. For when Moses, when he went before the burning bush, and he said to God, what is your name? And God said, I am who am. Tell them I am who sent you. Existence itself. That it's a great mystery that God has always existed. God is existence itself, even before the world and the angels and all this was created. God was always there. I don't know what God was doing, but he was always there. God was always there. That's why he's, I am, he refers to his divinity, his existence as God. And Jesus uses that title for himself, the very title that God in the burning bush gave to Moses, Jesus is now using for himself. And he, say, and he says, you will die in your sins unless you come to believe that I am. Faith. Faith is what he wants. The one thing that the Israelites did not have in the desert was faith in God. They complained for 40 years. The Israelites in the first reading in the book of Numbers, they complained. Imagine that, complaining for 40 years. Don't you hate it when people just complain and they complain and they complain and they complain and they complain. Your ears get big. That's why Moses had like a nervous breakdown in in the desert because the people were just complaining and complaining. And you know what, what, what they said where God really punished the Israelites? Where God rained down manna from heaven, bread from heaven, the best bread that you could ever have. Bread every day came from heaven to the earth to feed the people. And you know what the Israelites said? He said, we're disgusted with this wretched food. They called the bread from heaven wretched food. Don't ever, don't ever say that. God, the bread from heaven that you give God, call it wretched food. And so what did God do? God sent seraph serpents to bite the people because of their sin, because they complained, because they called the bread from heaven wretched food. And the people died from the serpents. And then Moses prayed for the people. And God told them to make a seraph serpent, mount it on a pole, make a bronze serpent. And whoever looks at the bronze serpent will be saved. So Moses 
when they raised up the bronze serpent and the people looked at the bronze serpent, that they were healed of the serpent's bite. This is a typology for the cross. Because Jesus says, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am, and that I do nothing on my own, but only say what the Father taught me. When you will raise up the Son of Man on the cross, then you will be healed of the serpent's bite. What's the serpent's bite? Original sin. Our own sins. That's the serpent's bite. The serpent's trying to bite us every day. If you don't think that, you're not living the Christian life. If you don't think that the serpent is trying to bite you every day, he is trying to bite you. He's trying to have you complain about this wretched food about the gifts that God gives us. And the, and the true bread from heaven that God gives us is the Eucharist. Jesus is bread from heaven that he gives us. As he instituted on Holy Thursday. But Jesus will also heal us of our sins, of our defection, of our complaining to God. He will heal us of our lack of faith or lack of belief. And only when we have faith in the Son of Man, when he's raised up, then we will come to believe in the Son of Man. Then we will come to believe that he is the one who takes away our sins. Only God can take away our sins. So he has to assume our humanity in order to show us his divinity, to take away our sins, to shed his precious blood upon us, to give us new life so that we're not bitten by the serpent and we experience eternal death, but through the Son of God, through his precious blood, through his resurrection, we will experience eternal life. And this is why Jesus, who's come down from the earth, he will go back up again. But the way that he will go back up again is he will go back up through suffering, through the cross. So many people want to avoid the cross in their life, want to avoid suffering, and say, no, I want to get to heaven my own way. But God says, no, there's only one way. It's the cross. It's through suffering. It's through death. That's the only way to get to heaven. Jesus went that way to get to heaven. He went through the cross to go to heaven and to bring all to himself. But we also have to go through that cross to get to heaven also. That's why the title, the Son of Man, we must embrace that. Because it's only through suffering that we can go to heaven. It's only through following the Son of Man that we can go to heaven. But it's also Jesus' divinity as the Son of God that lifts us up, that gives us eternal life. Others will raise him up on the cross. That's what he says, when you lift up the Son of Man, others will raise him up on the cross. But raising up from the dead, that will not be others. That will be the Son of God himself will raise himself up from the dead because death will have no hold over him because he is greater than death. Have you ever heard of someone who's greater than death itself? That's the good news of the gospel. Jesus is greater than death itself. He can conquer death through his very divinity and his humanity through his suffering. He conquered death because he's the sinless one. And so death has no hold over him. Because he's without sin, death has no hold over him. As, as the ancient fathers of the church say, Jesus allowed the bowels of death to swallow him, only to burst asunder the bowels of death and to conquer death once and for all for us. And once he conquered death, then we are given eternal life. And that's why he says, you will die in your sins unless you come to believe that I am. But if you come to believe that I am, then he will give you eternal life. Much as the Israelites who were bitten by the serpent in the desert, they, they looked at the bronze serpent, they were healed, they were given life again. They were in death, they were sick, 
and now they're given life. So whoever looks at the Son of Man and believes in him will be granted eternal life. That's good news. We always need to hear good news because sometimes we're only looking at sickness and suffering and sin and death and all these negative things in the world, negative things in our life. We always need to have the good news. Jesus has come to bring us life. He's come to bring us new and everlasting life. And that's why we should rejoice in Jesus, rejoice in what he has done, rejoice in his titles as the Son of Man and the Son of God. He is the one who has come into the world. He is the one who has taken on human flesh and human sin. He is the one who has been lifted up as the Son of Man like the bronze serpent. And he's the one who brings us new and everlasting life. Trusting in the Lord's generosity, we now offer our petitions to him. For all clergy and religious, may they continue to be blessed and upheld by the truth they have received from the Father in Christ's name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For politicians, may their leadership be pleasing to God and benefit all who live in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the elderly who are homebound or unvisited, may the Lord fill them with his presence and comfort them with friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our family of faith gathered here, may the Lord bless us and grow us and grow us in virtue through our Lenten efforts of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who have died and for all the souls in purgatory, may their sins be forgiven so that they may live with Christ in his kingdom this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. For all the members of the Association of Marian Helpers and the Confraternity of the Immaculate Conception, both living and deceased, and for all the intentions they have entrusted to us, as well as all those who call or write to us, may the Lord favorably hear their prayers and strengthen them in faith, hope, and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for peace in the Ukraine. We pray for an end to war and violence and bloodshed, and for all the victims of the war, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. We pray for all those who are still suffering from COVID. We pray for their healing. We pray that God may console them in their sufferings, and we pray especially for all healthcare workers working with COVID patients. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all of our personal intentions, which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Merciful Father, you sent your Son to redeem and save us. Hear the prayers we now offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and the work of human hands, and will become for us the bread of life. 
Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. For to the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Spirit and contrary to me, accept by you all your sacrifice, you said this day, be pleased to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, of my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, that being moved to compassion, you may both pardon our offenses and direct our wavering hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite power of your majesty, since by the wondrous power of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed in the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Vincent Ferrer, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession and your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and William, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy come. kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be, done. be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread. and forgive us Give our trespasses, us as we forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. Delete us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I'm not I'm worthy, worthy that, that you should enter under my roof, but only say, say the word, the word and my soul, soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. an act of spiritual communion and thanksgiving. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and a desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And from the diary of St. Faustina. Entry 810. The following afternoon, when I entered the ward, I saw someone dying and learned that the agony had started during the night. When I verified it, it had been at the time when I had been asked for prayer. And just then I heard a voice in my soul, say the chaplet which I taught you. I ran to fetch my rosary and knelt down by the dying person and with the, all the adder of my soul, I began to say the chaplet. Suddenly the dying person opened her eyes and looked at me. I had not managed to finish the entire chaplet when she died with extraordinary peace. I fervently asked the Lord to fulfill the promise he had given me for the recitation of the chaplet. The Lord gave me to know that the soul had been granted the grace he had promised me. That was the first soul to receive the benefit of the Lord's promise. I could feel the power of mercy envelop that soul.
Let us pray. Grant we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A couple of announcements. First of all, for our Easter weekend, what's called the Easter Trigil from Holy Thursday to Easter Sunday, you can download a flyer on our website, shrineofdivinemercy.org. If you go scroll down to our calendar and look on Easter weekend, you can find a, a, a flyer with all of our events on there, with all of our services over the weekend. So we will live stream uh, most of our services over the weekend. So please tune in if you're tuning in and you're not able to still come to church for whatever reason, you can tune in. We will live stream Easter weekend. Also for Divine Mercy Sunday weekend, our weekend uh, celebration of Divine Mercy Sunday will be modified this year. There will be no buses, only cars will be allowed. Each vehicle will need to pre-register on our website at shrineofdivinemercy.org. There are three sessions available for registering, Saturday, April 23rd, Sunday, April 24th, uh, one session in the morning, and we will have one session in the afternoon. If the session is filled on the website, then please sign up for another time. And the deadline for registration and volunteers, it will be Tuesday, April the 12th. So if you haven't signed up for a Tuesday, before Tuesday, April 12th, we will not be able to accept any more registrations. If you would like to come, please register your vehicle before that date. We are still in need for volunteers, especially for our parking area. So if you would like to do parking or if you could do parking, we need some more volunteers to help us with parking on that weekend. Please go to shrineofdivinemercy.org for more information on volunteering and to sign up. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. O oh God, who choose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, so merit the grace of your consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend Amen. us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking their own souls. Amen. And we continue to pray for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. Lord Jesus, hear our pleas, our good shepherd and divine physician. We implore your mercy in the wake of an outbreak of serious illness and disease. Guide our efforts to prevent contagion and make preparations care for those most vulnerable. Assist all professionals and volunteers who work to eradicate the epidemic now spreading. May our actions be marked by your steadfast love and selfless service and never by panic or fear. Bestow your comfort and healing to the sick, sustain and strengthen them by your grace. May they know your closeness as they carry the cross of illness. And may all you have called from this life come to worship you eternally with all the saints as you grant consolation and peace to their mourners. Amen. Holy Mary, health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph, hope of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Rocco, protector against epidemics. Pray for us. Saint Faustina, secretary and apostle of divine mercy. Pray for us. Saint Stanislaus Popchinski, patron of those in mortal danger. Pray for us. And for all their faults, I will grant forgiveness. Nevermore will I remember their sins. Grant to us, O Lord, a heart renewed. Recreate in us your own spirit. There is nothing more important we can ever do in our life than receive the promises Jesus offers us in Divine Mercy. Right now we're running a special on our book, Understanding Divine Mercy, that explains it all. Just enter the code FAITH 
and we can get this book to you for only $9.95. God bless you. The information's on your screen. Please pick up a copy. Jesus said that he wanted this image in every home, and our goal is to make that happen. So we've made these extremely affordable. They're the cheapest ones price-wise that you'll find on the internet, but the nicest in quality. And these images and many more can be found on our website, divinemercyart.org. If you want to go straight, you can also get it at shopmercy.org. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.